Hello, my beautiful family, and welcome back to the channel. First of all, I owe everyone a very big apology, okay? I had a colossal lapse in judgment, and I need to ask for your forgiveness, please. My last episode, I was defending Ed. I don't know what was wrong with me, okay? But God, I think, decided that I needed a slap of reality because the whole weekend, my YouTube feed was just filled with all of these old videos of Ed. And I was watching them and I was like, oh, oh boy, I made a big mistake. So Humpty Dumpty rolls up at a bar thinking he's going to meet Liz there and finally talk to her face to face after calling off the wedding. He orders a drink, he sits down, and he calls her up. She's like, all of a sudden, you want me to stop what I'm doing and come down to a bar with my daughter? He's like, yeah, well, you haven't talked to me for three days and you're her mother. I'm sorry, weren't you just asking this little sweetheart a couple episodes ago if you could be her dad? She's like, no, Ed, you haven't spoken to me for three days, okay? I've been trying to call you, I've been texting you. My mind's made up, Liz, my mind's made up, regardless, 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 my mind is made up, okay? I don't know what to expect out of you. Oh, she hung up. He is such a piece of trash. How does he think he will ever, ever do better than Liz? And what is she supposed to do now? She walked away from her career. She moved out to Arkansas. What is she gonna do in Arkansas? She's got her daughter with her. This has been the hardest relationship I've ever worked for. It is terrifying to lose someone that I fought so hard to be with. He's like, it doesn't matter, Liz. My mind is already made up. And she's like, okay, fine. If your mind is made up and you don't want to have a conversation with me, fine. And she hangs up on him. All right, that was it for those two. Let's move on. Oh, Nicole, AKA Eraserhead, is deemed by Reality Dumpster Dive. She always cracks me up. And Mock Moody, okay? Mock Moody is running around the street with his little slippers on and Julian is trying to chase him down so he doesn't get hit by a car. Julian is just all over him. And if I was Mahmoud and someone kept handling me that way, I would just start swinging and flailing all over the place. I'm mean, just thrilled. I'm really trying to keep that in more so. I get that. Okay, sit down then. I need to just sit down. Away, please, for just sit down. Just... Mahmoud is like, dude, I need to walk this off. Just let me go. And Julian is pleading with him to sit down. Mahmoud is in his 30s. Leave him alone. Maybe I can take my stuff and try to find like somewhere I can stay for tonight. So Mahmoud is like, dude, I am going to take a walk. So he does. Meanwhile, Nicole is laying in bed with her girlfriend saying, I am so sorry you had to see that. Are you really? You're sorry? Her friend's like, oh, I hope that Mahmoud comes to his senses. <clears throat> what? Nicole tells us that she's angry. She's furious that for years she has been putting in so much effort and just like that he thinks he can pack up and walk away <coughs> apparently she didn't mean it when she yelled repeatedly to get out of the effing house i mean how stupid are these girls to comfort nicole and act like mahmoud is the problem i really regret saying anything to him when we got back i should have just let the night be like a fun night for everybody instead it turned into like drama and i feel terrible about it no you don't you don't feel bad. She's like, what are you doing? Where are you? And he's like, I'm staying in a hotel, okay? Well, what hotel? Tell me. Nope, gotta go, bye. And he hangs up. I think she's just furious that she's losing control of him. Mahmoud asks production if they can help him to get an Uber and they're like, no, just get in the car. We'll, we'll take you, come on. Love is part of his life. It's not everything. Love is not enough for marriage, I think. Somehow I think it's over now. Good for you, Mahmoudi. So the next morning he's out getting some tea and he tells us that he feels really confused because he still has love for her, but he's realizing they're just too different. So he calls Nicole and asks her how she's doing and she says, terrible. I feel so sad about everything you did last night. Well, maybe I was just mad at you, Mahmoud. And then she starts ripping into him. She is straight up evil, you guys. You've done nothing to cause problems for me. You, you spent three hundred dollars on my credit cards for the hotel. He's like Nicole. I didn't want to use your card. Okay, mine didn't work. I'm going to pay you back. I want to come over and get all my stuff. And she's like, "Give me a couple hours." And I care about him, even though he does have his flaws and they're like super annoying. But I still love him. Nicole, if you ever see this, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, you are a terrible person. Mahmoud shows up and she's like, hi, 
And she just stares at him and he starts getting his belongings together and she's like, where are you staying? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know if he's doing all of this stuff so he can go back to Egypt because he misses Egypt so much or if he just like hates me at this point or what? He hates you. We all do. He gives her her money back, gives her the phone he was using and throws on his shoes. She's like, what are you doing, Mahmoud? At no point when she is speaking to him, is it ever kind or even neutral? She's always got tone and attitude when she talks to him. He's like, I'm going to find a hotel, okay? I don't know yet. You act like you've been here in LA like for 20 years or something. You can just, you know, go and get a hotel room and just. Dude, LA is covered in hotels and motels. He's in his 30s. He's not a petulant child, you freak. He's like, Nicole, you asked me to leave, so I am. And she's like, yeah, but then I told you to stay. And this is why you shall go say all this to me around your No, the whole day was like rife with like horrible I can't stand her, you guys. My mind is still trying to wrap around what has happened. Her behavior is so disgusting. And I hesitate to say this, but just, oh my gosh. I wouldn't be surprised if she called the cops on him because he wasn't doing what she wanted him to do and she's just like trying to trap him. Then go, then yes, yeah, go, 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 go. So he walks out, the producers are like, okay, Mahmoud, where are we going? He says, I'm never going back there. Leave me, I'm not going back. Leave me that, like this time I'm not going back ever yet. I don't know what happened, but Mahmoud just takes off walking. I don't know why he wouldn't go into the car with the producers, but yeah, he takes off without a phone, and then the next episode, we'll watch this lunatic driving around the streets of LA looking for Mahmoud. Leave him alone, for goodness sake. Okay, on to Emily and Cobesters. We're back in the club. Emily has walked away because she's so ticked off that Kobe's friends won't let her get a full sentence in. I don't care where you're from, don't interrupt me. I'm trying to tell you how I feel, so I had to walk away, because I'm not gonna freak out. I'm not gonna yell, I'm not gonna cause a scene. So Kobe is talking to his friends, trying to get them to chill out a little bit, and then he goes to talk to Emily. He's like, Emily, please, let's have a nice night. They're only trying to express the mind of an African man. And she's like, you never defended me. You never spoke up for me. It's like five guys against me and it's not fair. And he's like, please, if we end the night right now, it's gonna be so awkward. Please come back to the table. Emily's like, fine, Kobe. I'm gonna act like a lady. I want a refill and I want to drink that and then I'll think about going over there. So they go back and sit down and right away Valerie is like, see Emily, Cameroonian women are supposed to stay quiet when her husband talks. She goes, um, well, I guess I don't do that because I'm an American. All the friends, all the friends of Kobe will say you're bossy. You get me? I was cracking up when she didn't say a word and just poured that drink. I would have been like, oh. Are you done talking now? Do I have permission? Is it my turn? Ah, thanks, Dad. Kobe finally speaks up and he's like, you guys, we're here for a limited time. Arguing makes zero sense. Can we please just have a nice time? Then another friend speaks up and he's like, are you guys seriously going to maintain this? Like, come on. This is what I'm saying. It's like, I'm never gonna be good enough for them in their eyes, for you. She's like, this is why I said maybe they shouldn't come to our wedding because obviously they don't support our relationship. Guys, I'm sorry to say this. If you feel like my relationship, our relationship is not worthy, then I don't think you should show up on our wedding. Oh yeah, Kobe. Tell him. So they get up and start walking out and all the friends are like, Kobe, no, wait, wait. And he just keeps on walking. Beautiful. Moving on. We're with Patrick and Thais in Brazil and Patrick's dad has unexpectedly showed up. Okay, Thais is not very happy. I didn't tell Thais that my dad was coming because I just didn't want to give her an opportunity to say no. I'd rather ask for forgiveness than permission. Mm. So the dad is holding and kissing the baby and their baby is so adorable. Can't even take it. Thais is like, hey dad, I had no idea you were coming. Patrick didn't tell me. And you can kind of see the attitude. She's clearly not happy and the dad just stares back at her. <laughs> the dad just stares at her and he's like, how was the flight? Oh, good, great. Hey, here's a five gallon bucket of paint. I'm gonna need you to paint the whole house. Uh, Patrick, this and this and that. I'm gonna need you to work on this. Actually, I've got a list. The door needs to be done. It's Take not it time to do all. Three days only. We do everything. Dad, I got one leg. 
<laughs> so the dad is persistent. He's not taking no for an answer. Patrick really doesn't mind helping out his dad, so he tells him he'll do whatever he can to help. Then Thais tells us that his dad is constantly raising their rent. And she's like, in Brazil, it's not common for the rent to get raised all the time like this. And not only that, but as the owner, it's his job to maintain the property when we're not here. I think Jose is taking advantage to Patrick. He should be able to get someone to do this. He's asking Patrick because, you know, he's his son. In her private interview, she says that Patrick has a huge heart, but the dad just takes and takes and takes and never pours anything back into Patrick. So naturally, Thais is worried that he's going to get hurt by his dad. I wouldn't mind going to the ranch and helping out. What? You going to the ranch? So first, John invites himself on the trip. Then Patrick's dad just shows up takes over their entire trip. He finally leaves and she's like, Patrick, we're not here to work on the house. And he's like, he brought paint over to be nice. What? <laughs> he just brought it to be nice. To be nice, ask you to paint? Thais is like, he hasn't seen you in nearly three years and immediately he, he wants you working? And Patrick's like, well, you know, he doesn't have a lot of money to hire anyone else. I would never want Jose in a bad situation, but I'm worried that he has selfish intentions. So they go back and forth debating how much time they're gonna be spending working on the house. And then the baby starts crying so their conversation kind of comes to a close. In the next episode, we're going to see them meet up with her dad who had just called Patrick a bastard in the previous episode. So I'm looking forward to that. The dad better be nice to Patrick or I'm gonna be mad. Oh, real quick, Alexi and Lauren, they're headed to the prep for her mommy makeover. They talk to the surgeon and Alexi realizes that his wife really will not be able to do anything for two months. And he's kind of panicked over this. I'm still a little bit on the fence about the surgery. There's a lot of things that can go wrong maybe and uh, I'm worried. Then the surgeon tells her that she's going to need drains and they require constant monitoring. You have to keep track of all the fluid like the amount of fluid that is draining out and continuously empty out the bags. Ooh. I'm really determined to do this. This is something I want to do for me. And when he sees that, he knows like I have to support her. I totally understand wanting a makeover and feeling so ugly in your own skin. And even if everyone else is telling you that you look amazing and you're beautiful and you're crazy, it just doesn't matter. You don't feel beautiful but she has three kids under three years old. That's a lot to ask a single man who is working. And that was it for them. <sighs> Last, we have Gino and Jasmine. I think my coverage of these two is coming to a close. Their segments are just becoming more and more pornographic and like, I'm over it. I am so over it. I don't wanna see them on my screen ever again. So real quick, Gino, who apparently is too broke for a lawyer, takes Jasmine to Miami to cheer her up because her mom has cancer or something. Isn't it weird that he doesn't mind taking a trip to Miami with Jasmine, but he's too broke for her kids? They're walking through the park, pushing a dog in a stroller. If you are one of those people, keep that crap to yourself. Let a dog walk for Pete's sake. The dog ends up jumping out and just running around because it's a dog. Oh, <laughs> go, go. Coco! Coco! Get back here! Coco! They're on their way to go see her friend Leon Leandro? Okay, she tells Gino she used to have a fantasy of doing it in a public place, and then Leandro was like, hey, I'll do it with you. Great! I got confused. Did you want me to try it with someone else in public or with you? Well, probably both. This is where I tuned out, you guys. I'm sick of it. I'm done. If anyone wants to start a petition about the kinds of people we want to see falling in love okay that is the premise of the show it's supposed to be love stories not this trash which leads me to love in paradise family i will not be covering this season of love in paradise i am so upset like i can't even express how upset i am that they would allow this man to have a platform he's had plenty of screen time already why why are they showcasing him on this season, uh, such a popular show. He is a predator and I want to see him locked up. If it's not behind bars, in a padded room, put him away somewhere. <sighs> I, 
I hope this comes back to bite TLC in the butt because unfortunately, unless they take a hit financially, they're gonna keep casting these freaks for sensationalism. Like they're looking for their next big ed. So I will be silently protesting this season or not so silent because I just announced it. If you haven't seen James Rush's video about Kyle, go watch it, okay? I will link it below. And that is it for this one, you guys. Um, I'm sorry my videos are gonna be out a little bit late. Um, we've just been super busy at home doing projects and then my sister just had her first baby. So I wanna go see him and hold him. I'm so excited. I wanna welcome Mr. Windsor, our newest member. Thank you for signing up. And Papal and Purple, welcome back. Thank you so much for being a buddy. And I will see all of you guys later i don't know when but later i love you and i'll see you in the next one bye